everyone. This video is designed for anyone who is experiencing sciatica that's due to a disc herniation. And that's the discs that are in between your vertebrae. When it herniates, it presses out into the nerve that um, can create a very strong <laughs> zappy sensation down the leg. So these poses are designed to help alleviate that. And one of the, the best moves for that or the, the alignment to be in is extension of the spine, um, the arching of the back that really helps um, push the disc back into its place stacked um, in between the two uh, vertebrae. So put on your playlist, your favorite playlist. You can grab a block that's all we'll need for today. And let's begin. So we'll start on our back. And if you feel any of those symptoms down the leg as you're doing these moves and the poses, uh, back out of it. You know, really take care of, of yourself. I have no idea what's going behind the, the screen. So just take care. And one of the best ways to monitor that is through your breath. Um, notice uh, the pace of your breath and if you're holding your breath and um, just keep it as an objective measure for the next time you do it. And hopefully over time, um, you'll be able to do all of, of the poses, you know, so um, just be gentle with yourself. So let's get started on our backs and bring the block with you. We'll lay on down and lift the hips on up and slide the block underneath the pelvis. So this is a supported bridge. And just have the arms by your sides. Let's kind of just take a few centering breaths here. Grounding through your feet, but also grounding through your breath. Nice smooth inhales and exhales to bring you into presence with this practice today, with getting in touch with your body, with tuning into what your body needs. You can stay right here or hug your right knee in toward your chest. And from there, you'll slide that left leg straight out, even maybe look up and make sure that that leg goes out straight. So there's a tiny bit of that arch in the low back and a stretch across the left thigh, getting into the hip flexors, kind of opening up that joint, the hip joint, from what we do all day long, which is a lot, well, a lot of us do, and these days have been doing a lot of sitting, so that really opens up through the hip joint and the hip flexors, the quads. So release that right knee switch, bring the left knee in, slide the right leg out and really emphasize that extension and left length through that right leg even point the toes away and then little tiny arch of the back and then anchor into your breath nice smooth inhales and exhales again like steadying your breath will help steady your body it'll help steady your mind And then go ahead and release. Bend both knees, lift the hips on up, slide the block out of the way. And then from here, you'll roll like a log to the side. So your whole body moves as one unit, especially if you're in a lot of, in a lot of pain, that really helps. And then come on to your, your tummy here. And we'll do some cobras here. So you'll slide your hands back kind of underneath the, the elbows and then press into the tops of the feet so the knees lift up and ground down through even the pubic bone here and lift from the back of the heart. Come on up on an inhale and exhale, come on down. So just a little mini cobra here, right? Just you're lifting from the back of the heart. I'm just coming to my low ribs and then coming back down on the exhale. Inhaling, coming back up. Exhale, lowering down. 
Your glutes are firm, but they're not clenching. All right, so even check, like make sure you're not gripping in through the glutes. Keep moving with your breath a few more times. Next one, you'll come on up and slide your arms forward. So the forearms are parallel. Your elbows are right underneath your shoulders. This is Sphinx pose. And this one, I really, really like this one for uh, the low back pain patient that has um, sciatica due from a disc herniation. Um, this is, it's, it's the one of the most common um, the, the ailments or how the, with the disc herniation. Um, so you could have a, even do this throughout the day if you're really symptomatic. I have patients do this one and even put ice on their back or heat. You have to kind of play around with what works for you. You have to be a, like an investigator, what, what the heat or the ice works. Sometimes it's a combination of the both. 10 minutes on heat, 10 minutes off on ice. So you can alternate too. So Sphinx pose is a really great one. Couple more breaths here. And if you need to be a little bit lower, you could even be here, right? Good, and then come on back. And have a seat. And bring your, your legs out wide. And just side note, I'm pretty bendy. So if you're not looking like me, I have actually have the reverse issue. I need to, you know, come back out of it sometimes a little bit. So we want to arch our back, have the legs out as wide as you can, and then start to lean forward here, keeping that arch. So we're getting a stretch in the legs, stretching maybe even the inner thighs here. Wide leg forward fold. And if this is too uncomfortable and intense for you, if you are having that sciatic happening right now, you could try it in standing too. So in a wide legged um, fold standing on your mat. And just lean into it, emphasizing that arch in your back. If that's really hard for you to get too, you can sit up on a pillow here, a little boost, so you find that arch. And you might just be up here and leaning into it and really finding that stretch in the legs and the inner thighs. Good, and then let's bend the knees. Come over onto all fours. And drop down to puppy pose so you'll come down into your elbows. This is like a mini version of a downward facing dog. So slide the arms out, have the, um, you could have the elbows down or lifted and the head down to the ground. So the hips are over the knees here. And we're really emphasizing getting our hips up and back, sitting bones up and back and arching. And arms out forward and strong and, and ahead of you and find your breath here. Emphasizing the extension and the elongation of your back, especially your low back. Great. And then bring the hands back underneath of you. Good. And onto your belly again. Do a little breather from the belly the for um, Shalavasana. Very uh, strengthening move for the low back. So the arms this time are by your sides, turn the palms up, bring the shoulders back away from the ground, bring the legs together, lift the legs up, lift your heart up, the hands are down, and hold here, but keep breathing, nice strong breaths. Shalabhasana. Squeeze the legs together, seal them together, lift from the back of the heart. Awesome. Go ahead and release down. Make a little pillow for your forehead. Nice, smooth, deep breath. Good. And then come back to all fours. And 
Let's go ahead and move into downward facing dog. So lifting the hips up and back. If you're feeling up to it, you could move forward and back from downward dog to upward dog. Downward dog and upward dog. So that's an option here. Otherwise, you're in your downward facing dog, holding here, maybe a big bend in the knees here to really extend the hips up and back, the sitting bones up and back. And from there, after you keep get that length in your torso, then drop your heels down on the ground. Oh, then you'll feel the hamstrings and calves way more. <laughs> Breathe. Move the air. Circulate the oxygen. And then walk the feet toward the hands. And then be really, really mindful here of the knees being bent so you can arch your back here, ground down through the legs to come on up to standing. Take a full deep breath here. And releasing the hands down. Oh, good job. Thanks for joining me. Namaste.